Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and I am the owner of Lily Rose Craft Room. And for today's video, we are going to be making a neon arched rainbow tumbler. I'm starting off with the prep tumbler, meaning I already sanded it and I painted it white. So now we're gonna be putting on the template. This template I had bought from Ellie's Crafty Co. on Etsy. And it comes with two files. The first template with the bigger lines is the one that we're gonna cut first. And this is gonna be used as a stencil. So the second one is gonna be used as vinyl outlines. So for this one, for the stencil use, I am using a removable vinyl. That way it doesn't peel off my paint when I take it off and it's easier to remove than the permanent vinyl. So this template is for a 20 ounce skinny and on Ellie's Crafty Co. website, she has suggested dimensions, like if you have a steel magnolia or a maker's flow, she has the suggested dimensions, so you can view that if you have a different tumbler. So that's really helpful. So to lay on the vinyl, I like to align it first, and then I lay it on something so it doesn't move. And then I peel back a little bit of the vinyl and just cut a little piece of the paper and then I'm gonna lay it on the cup, that way it doesn't move. So once we got that little piece on, I like to turn it over and pull back a little bit of that paper so it could just slide right out. And then I use my felt tip scraper and I just push and work that vinyl all the way around. And if that piece of paper starts getting in the way in the back, you could just cut it off. And here's what it looks like when it's done. It aligned nice and straight, and this is my go-to way of applying vinyl wrap to tumblers. It just makes everything way easier. What we're gonna do next is peel off the first part of the tumbler that we're gonna make white. So this is gonna be that bottom part and then the top part. And you're gonna leave the other part on because we're gonna be taking it off as we go as we apply the certain colors. And make sure you're using removable vinyl. This is the Oracle 631. That way when you're peeling off your stencil, your paint is not gonna be lifting up with it. So. 631 is removable and 651 is permanent. So always remember that. And I always keep some removables on hand that way I just use them as stencils. And the reason why my cup is not painted all the way like how it should be is because my kids love doing arts and crafts. So my paints are not always full. So my white happened to be empty and I was just working with what I had. So anyways, now we're going to do this part white because I wanted it white. So I'm going to be using Mod Podge as an adhesive. So I'm just going to put a little layer and then I'm going to sprinkle my glitter into a second layer. This glitter that I'm using is called Fizzy and it's from my shop and it's really pretty. It has white and bluish tones to it. And then after this first layer of glitter, I like to let it dry for about 30 minutes and then I use a clear Rust-Oleum spray to seal in the glitter because I don't like to brush off excess glitter. Instead, I like to keep it. I spray it with the clear spray paint and then let it dry for about 10 minutes or whatever and then give it a second layer. And I think if my cup was painted how it should have been the first time, then I wouldn't have needed a second coat 
but here we are a second coat for coverage but if you don't need a second coat you don't have to put a second coat I'm gonna be moving on to the next step because this is basically the same step as part one so right after I finish putting the second layer of the glitter right after before I do anything else when it's still wet I take off the vinyl pieces right next to it that way if the Mod Podge got on it, it won't lift it up if I would wait for it to dry. And if you have any chunks like how I do after I took off the vinyl, you can go ahead and just like brush them off or use your finger to just flatten them in. And then you're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. So after I peel off the vinyl on this side and flatten the glitter, I like to take the cup outside and give it a really good heavy spray of the clear Rust-Oleum. That way all the glitter is fully sealed. And I let it dry for like an hour or two, or if you have a heat gun, you can speed up the process. And after that's fully dry, we move on to the next part. All right, so moving on to the next part, you're gonna need a small brush. And we're just going to brush on some Mod Posh over this section. And this is the color pink that we're going to do. This is probably the most tedious part of this project is just brushing on the Mod Posh into these little tiny sections and trying to be like very, very careful. So after we got all the Mod Posh on this first section, I'm going to be going in with the neon pink. And you can find this color on my website. It's called Neon Pink and it's available at lilyrosecraftroom.com. And after I was done with that section, I right away sprayed it with the clear Rust-Oleum spray paint outside. And just know that I'm going to spray that clear Rust-Oleum every single section. So if I forgot to if I forget to mention it, just know that I did spray it. So after I sprayed it, I let it dry for about say like 30 minutes or you could speed up the process with the heat gun and we're going to give it a second coat just so it could be more vibrant and after i'm done with the second coat of glitter while the mod podge is still wet i'm going to take off that second layer of the vinyl that's right next to it that way if i wait till it's dry there's a chance of it lifting up the Mod Podge from the pink part. So after that's done, I'm gonna go outside and spray it with some clear rust -oleum. Before I moved on to the next part, I dried my Mod Podge on the pink part with my heat gun for about three minutes. So if you have a heat gun, it just really speeds up the process. So next I'm gonna be moving on to the orange part. I was working in sections just because the Mod Podge was drying too fast. When I was trying to be careful so the next parts I'm gonna be working in small sections and just know that each stripe will have two coats on it and I think I'm just gonna blow right past through the other stripes also just because it's really repetitive and I'm doing the same exact thing Next, I started moving on to the purple part at the bottom. You don't have to go in any certain order. I just started doing the purple because that part has been open. So I did that and this purple is called Grape Soda and all these glitters that I'm using are from my website. The Grape Soda is not in my neon collection, but I don't have a purple neon, but I felt like this one really went well with it. So I just went with it. And here we go with the second layer of the orange and if you see the the lines are not perfectly straight that is okay because we are going to put the vinyl on top of it that's going to cover like the jagged lines so this is kind of like a trust the process i always say that i feel like every video is trust the process because at the end it just it all comes together So for the next sections, I was going to do the yellow and I felt like the glitter was going to be too light, like you wouldn't be able to see it as much. So I colored that next section with a Posca marker, which is an acrylic paint. 
So I did that along with the blue and also the green. So after I'm done with this section of the glitter, I spray the whole entire cup with the clear Rust-Oleum just to make sure the glitter will not move once I epoxy it. And after I do that, I let the cup dry for a full 24 hours before I put the epoxy on it just to make sure the Mod Podge is completely dry. The epoxy that I'm using is Alumilite Quick Coat Epoxy. And the measurements that I use is 25 of part A and 25 of part B and I just mix them together until it's clear and then apply it. And the reason I do so much for the first layer is because I feel like it absorbs with the glitter just because it's the very first layer. So that's the reason why the first one is a lot. And I really like this epoxy because it's dry to the touch in 4-5 to five hours so you could put another layer right after so you could just if you're a cup maker, you could just pop out cups quick with this one. I've always liked Illuminite's epoxy. I've been using it since day one. I've tried other brands, but I always come back to this one. And if you're interested in getting Illuminite, use code LILY10 for 10% off. And I just coat the cup with my gloved hand and just make sure you're using proper PPE when you're using epoxy, which is gloves and respirator mask. And after I spread the epoxy around evenly, I use a torch and this one is called burn Zomatic, And I just go over the cup just to make sure I pop any micro bubbles. And you could do this with a heat gun, but with the heat gun, it will melt the epoxy and make it like really, really runny. But with this torch, it just pops them right away. This is about five hours later. So I am using the same Alumilite Quick Coat Epoxy, but this time I'm using 10 mLs of part A and 10 mLs of part B. And you're just gonna mix that up until it's nice and clear and spread that all over the cup. And after I'm done layering the epoxy, I use a heat torch to pop the micro bubbles. After the next day, the cup is completely smooth. I just have a couple rough edges like the tops and the bottoms. So I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and just sand the cup so it's like completely smooth. I sanded the cup off camera and I washed it with soap and water to get all that dust off. And then I also pre-cut the second part of the template that we were talking about earlier. This is the second part. And then I also found this cute um, SVG on the Cricut Design Space. So we're gonna be using that as the cup decal. I'm weeding out the parts that I don't need, which is the top and then the bottom. So the only parts that we're gonna be using is the little tiny, like the little double cuts. So I slowly peeled the first part of the cup, the first little sliver of the decal, and I'm gonna start at the back end of the cup. So make sure you hold it with your finger and then you just go along the edge of the color and you're just gonna follow it along until you meet on the other side. This vinyl color that I'm using is a holographic opal white vinyl and it's from Tech Wrap Craft. And if you shop on their website and you use code LILYROSE, 
you'll get 5% off your order. And you're just gonna meet the vinyls right at the middle. And then after, use your thumb to go all around the, the vinyl just to make sure it's really, really on. Because the last thing you want to happen is when you go on to put your epoxy, they're gonna start lifting. So make sure you really, really push down on that vinyl to make sure it's nice and secure. Since the vinyl is already cut to that shape, pre-cut to that shape, all you gotta do is just guide it around so it's not difficult to put on. Just slowly and steady. And if the vinyl overlaps a little, you could just take the blade and just cut it right off. So on to the next step, the last step for me is the epoxy. So I use 10 mLs of part A and then 10 mLs of part B to make a total of 20. And this was the last layer for me because once this was dry, I felt around the cup and I didn't feel any vinyl. But if you make this cup and you feel vinyl, you can go ahead and give it one more layer. All right, so here is the finished look. I really like how this came out. I had such a good time making this cup. It was really fun. So that's it for today's video. If you found this video helpful, if you learned something, if you wanna try making it, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of these videos, subscribe so you guys don't miss out on the next one. Thanks guys.